everyone welcome back to my channel my name is iris and this week's video i am going to show you three days in my life so i have split this video into two parts so in the first part you're going to see me update you on my current health condition as you might know that i did have iron deficiency anemia and i was away from school for a full year so now i am officially back in grad school so in the second part of this video, I'm going to show you how I'm holding up in grad school lately. Um, I also will be showing you a haul uh, of some supplies that I got for my iPad to make my note taking process a bit more comfortable and easier. This morning, I started the day with my Ferramax and some Kiwi. I take one capsule of Ferramax at 9 and also one lozenge of B12 at 11. So these you put under your tongue for them to dissolve. So today I am going to get blood work done. So I'm going to do my laundry right at the start of the morning and this is going to help me so that when I come back from doing my blood work, I can take a shower. This is one of my habits that I've built during the pandemic since it's good to clean off uh, your body once you've gone out. And since the pandemic, I have also been using the Lysol laundry sanitizer. Usually in the morning, once I've finished my iron supplement, uh, two hours after, I will have my cereal along with some bread and banana. And this cereal is iron fortified. So today I had my blood work done at two in the afternoon. Here I am back from the lab and then I am going to hop into the shower. So after getting my blood work done, I had some beef strips because I was a bit hungry. Here are my blood test results. Hemoglobin has steadily increased since I had my infusions last year in November and up until now um, with just having the Ferramax supplement. As you can see, I started off at 103 hemoglobin and it has increased up to 156. Ferritin, unfortunately, has been steadily decreasing. From what I see is that I started off at 2 ferritin and then after my infusion it went up. So after taking Ferramax, it has gone down again. So I have started to think about changing my iron supplement. So I have actually switched over to Proferin for my iron supplements and they are Heme iron, which compared to Ferramax is non-Heme iron. And if you've seen my previous videos on iron deficiency, you know that I have mentioned that Heme iron is easier to absorb compared to non-Heme. So my doctor did originally suggest for me to use Ferramax because it has a higher dose of elemental iron. But um, with the Heme iron like Proferin, you actually can take less of a dose because the Heme is easier to absorb and you don't have to take it with vitamin C and it doesn't matter if you take it with or without meals. So it is a bit more convenient, but it is more expensive. So really it depends on what you're looking for and what your body is suitable for. So in my last video where I updated you guys on my condition, I talked about my vitamin B12 deficiency. So I've been taking the hydroxy B12 that I showed you earlier in the video for about two months before I had this blood test and things are looking good as there is an increase. Of course, this blood work is not the most accurate at the moment because I am taking the B12 supplements and if you do that and get blood work done, you are most likely going to get a high value. So really it is just looking into your symptoms. So if you don't have any neurological symptoms, then it would mean that your supplement is working. If you still have those symptoms, then I would suggest speaking with your doctor and maybe B12 injections are more suitable for you as some people do have pernicious anemia and that is where they can't absorb B12. So injections would be more efficient. With my B12 
you can see that I first started off with 300 and that was before I had my iron infusions. Once I had my infusions and my anemia resolved, then my B12 went down to 145. So this decrease is because my once my iron increased, my body decided to use that iron and also pair it with the B12 to create red blood cells to increase the hemoglobin. That's normal. And because of that decrease, I needed to start supplementing for B12. And my first option was methylcobalamine. And that is actually the easiest B12 to absorb. But for some people with a certain mute, gene mutation, you can actually get some pretty bad side effects like heart palpitations and anxiety, which is what happened in my case. So then I switched over to hydroxocobalamine, which is the B12 that I showed you at the beginning of this video. That is unmethylated, so it's easier for my body and I didn't have any side effects from it. So if you are B12 deficient, do look into different types of B12 supplements before you purchase them and try each one out and if it doesn't work, definitely switch over. So the last thing that was on my blood work that I need to update myself on was my vitamin D as I first started off pretty low. Once I noticed that I was a bit low on vitamin D, I had to start supplementing as if I do want future iron infusions, it's best to have a good vitamin D level or else you could run into some side effects when you are getting your infusion. This is a pretty solid result because I doubled my vitamin D within three months of supplementing. Since I've been away from school for a year, my Expo dry erase markers actually dried out. So I purchased some new ones on Amazon and this one comes in four colors. I like to keep a whiteboard handy so that I can jot down any major assignment deadlines for my courses and also for any weekly to-do lists and this could be upcoming assignments, I'll break down the task for myself and also for weekly readings. If you have seen my desk setup video, you know I got this foldable desk off Amazon and I've been using it as a standing desk when I am doing some light reading work. When using my Apple Pencil, I like to put on some nib covers and these come in a pack of 40 and there are four different colors. So here is the gray. the white, the black, and finally the blue. I also got a nimble grip to help with holding the Apple Pencil because it is kind of hard. So this comes in a pack of two and I got the purple color. Here I am going to put on the blue nib cover onto my Apple Pencil. Here is the nimble grip on the Apple Pencil. So this is the first time of me using the nimble grip and also these new pencil nib covers. The old nib cover that I used was actually from the Apple Pencil case that I purchased from Amazon. So those are freebies. They weren't as uh, durable. They kind of ripped probably every week for me. So these ones are a little bit more solid and there is also more color selection. And the nimble grip is very comfortable to write with as I don't get a sore hand and the pencil feels a lot better to hold. So on Sundays, I usually have my lunch and watch Hometown Cha 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 as you might have noticed in my previous vlog. 
and yeah so usually i'll have my lunch and then i'll start doing my readings for the week so from my last vlog you would know that i'm taking a qualitative research class so this week's readings are actually um, for a class presentation that i have to do to help uh, teach the class what case study research is like and i'll have to do some extra readings and find an article that shows this research method i hope you enjoyed today's video thanks for watching and i know that some of my subscribers are interested in iron deficiency content and others are interested in college grad school studying tips so leave a comment down below and let me know what you want to see for iron deficiency or for any college related content and i will try and work towards those remember to subscribe like and turn on post notifications and i'll see you next time bye